how are we planning to roll this out? I mean, this is pretty exciting stuff, but it's it's going to be massive if it's killing that many carp. Are we going to do it on closed systems initially, like in the Murray in the Murray Darling Basin? How are they going to do this? Well, I need to point out that you're right. The scale of this is enormous. It's beyond just the Murray Darling Basin. So carp are found in every state and territory, with the exception of the Northern Territory, and in places like the Murray Darling Basin, they are the absolute dominant feature in the aquatic landscape. In terms of how we roll this out, we need to make sure that it's based on robust science that's very well planned and very effective. And so for that, the CSIRO are doing some computer modelling right now, where they're taking all of the data that we have about the virus and how it behaves, all the data we have about the target species, carp, and a whole range of different data sources about environmental var variables like flow and temperature, rainfall, and putting all that in the, in the model so we can ask the model questions like, how should we release this virus to maximise uh, outcomes in terms of carp control and minimise any negative outcomes? So that work will be finished in May. Um, difficult to anticipate what it will suggest in terms of scenarios for best release, but what we know from international examples is that the virus causes the biggest outbreaks when fish are stressed, so during low dissolved oxygen in, um, conditions and in environments where they are highly aggregated together. So, um, you know, wetlands when they're spawning or other places below dam walls where they're all shoulder to shoulder, that's a pretty good in, um, circumstance to release this virus to maximise the outcome.